Hello friends, welcome to my channel Creating Essence. I am Megan and I am so glad you stopped by today. Today I'm going to share a little kitchen hack to save you money and uh, help you eat cleaner by making things yourself that you probably never realized were so easy to do yourself. Today's project? Roasted red peppers. Now, you can get a jar, like a pint jar, at the store of roasted red peppers for about $5. This cost $3.99 at my local grocery store, Wegmans, which is like Publix or Kroger or any of that type of just classic grocery store. And we are going to turn that into a whole lot of super easy, preservative-free, really hands-off roasted red peppers. You can use them so many ways in so many recipes. First step is to turn on your broiler. Then we get out a plain old cookie sheet. Next, we wash our peppers. I like to use a little produce cleaner. This is my favorite. Nope, not sponsored, just a product I like to use. Spritz, rub it all over. I rinse with cold water, put it on the tray. One spritz, rub it all over. And this just cleans off anything like wax or coating that could be put on in the grocery store. So there's nothing extra, just the peel. Now that they're all cleaned, we put them in the oven under the broiler until this top side starts to get black and blistered. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Ooh, got some steam there. As you can see, we're getting some bubbling and some black spots. So we're gonna give each one just a quarter or a third turn. If they have four lobes, then we'll give it a quarter turn. If they have just three lobes, we'll give it a third turn just to put the next side closest to, stay away buddy. Sorry. My little helper here. I know. Shame on mommy for not letting you get burned. So the time will depend uh, a lot on your specific oven. Mine, the first round went for 10 minutes. We'll put this next side for five since it's already a little bubbled. And we'll check on it in five and see how it's doing. Five minutes is up. Check on the peppers. All right. They've got some nice and bubbly spots black spots give them I think all of these have three lobes except that one but I think this last turn is all they will need ah maybe that needs a fourth side so we'll see there we go probably about seven more minutes all right, each side has been nicely broiled and bubbled. So now we're going to transfer things to our glass bowl. You could probably use a metal bowl. I wouldn't recommend plastic. These are very hot. But I like the glass bowl. And this is not a huge bowl because even though this is a lot of peppers, once they're soft, they just kind of collapse. There we go. And you don't want it to be over the top of the rim of the bowl here, because now we're going to cover it with saran wrap. It's a good snug fit all the way around. And the heat from the peppers is going to help that. And there we have it. This. You can see there's a nice seal all the way around. I'm going to leave these at room temperature until they have mostly cooled. You're going to get a lot of condensation on the top. But what this does is trap in the heat and moisture so those peels are just going to fall off. It is so easy. 
So we're gonna set this aside for a little bit. All right, it's been about two hours. The kids are napping, so I'm gonna finish these up. You can see the tension is gone from up here. There is a lot of condensation, but they shouldn't be hot anymore. They are still slightly warm to touch, so definitely not hot. I'm gonna lay the saran wrap here to put the seasoned peels on. I have a container to put them in the fridge afterwards, and I have my knife and cutting board. All right. See, the peel just slips right off. It is no longer attached to the flesh, and it comes off very easily. Just slide it all off. It will be a little bit tighter up around the stem here because it attaches to the stem and that's really easy to deal with. You just go all over, make sure the peel is wiped off, and then pull it open. Scrape out those seeds. I slice off the top there where the peel is often still attached. Get rid of any of the rest of the seeds. And it's done. You can cut it into strips or leave it whole. I like to cut it into strips. That makes it easy just to grab a few and toss it in a recipe. Or you can save that step and leave them whole if you know the recipe that you will be using doesn't need them to be in pieces. For example, I have some recipes that I do in the crock pot that call for a roasted red pepper. And I know I'm just going to be blending up that sauce anyway with my immersion blender or something. So I just leave them whole and plop it in how it is. Same with hummus. I love to make roasted red pepper hummus and I can just put them in the blender whole, just wiping the peel off on all sides and then lay it open. And those membranes there are super soft. You can pull them apart with your hand, but I just find it's easiest to use the knife and just scrape it all off so you get every tiny seed and everything off at once instead of having it stick to your fingers. Stuck to the underside of that. There we go. Scrape off the mess. And that is it. There's about a quart, ah, a little less. I cheated and used one of the peppers for lunch before it was very cooled. But there's about a quart of roasted red peppers. All told, that took me about 10 minutes of hands-on time. For the peeling and seeding, it's maybe one minute per pepper, and each pepper, depending on size, will give you at least a half cup of roasted red peppers. So a six pack is nearly a quart if they're on the small side. If they're bigger, it could be even more. This is a really great way to save some money and cut some preservatives in your diet, but still eat really good delicious food. I hope this was helpful to you. I would love to hear in the comments below if you have ever roasted your own peppers before or if you have a favorite kitchen hack like this, let me know. Thank you so much for sticking around. Give it a thumbs up if you liked this video and please subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. Bye friends.